Good evening. I am headed to Big Bear Customs to meet my dear friend Arun, also known as Bosky, which is a name actually that I gave him. And that's another story altogether. But then this is a bike that I got thanks to him, inspired by him. So I'm going to be he's done a few things to the bike and uh, I'm going to be catching up with him and hopefully sharing some thoughts. We love uh, just chatting. So we'll probably chat and uh, let's see what comes out of it. So this is an interesting thing that I'm doing as part of the Happiness Helix podcast. I was wondering who should be the first guest. And then I realized that the first guest needs to be the person who, for most part, if not for the majority, inspired the podcast itself. And... Uh, a person whom I'm privileged to call my friend. I think friend is doesn't encompass what he is or who he is to me. And uh, uh, the the statement that people normally say, a brother from another mother, and I think that is so true in uh, in this case. And. Uh, to think that uh, it's about 25 years since I've known this wonderful person. And uh, if it had not been for the act of one person on the golf course in 1999, I might have never met this person. right? And the person that I'm talking about is my brother, Arun. Arun, more popularly now known on... Uh, Social media is Bosky. Incidentally, there's a, a story that the name Bosky was given to him by me. And uh, we would meet each other and we would uh, do an imitation of one of South India's or probably the world's greatest actors. And we would call each other Dapa Baskar. And he would do the same thing to me. And one day I looked at him and said, Hey, Bosky. And that's how the name Bosky happened. And then we started riding motorcycles together. And then we had to have uh, a name for our group. And uh, since he was the, the spirit of the moving spirit behind the group. And I was a great fan of Asterix and Obelix and the Wild Boars. And at that time, I think uh, there was this movie that came with Travolta and all of them. And that was about motorcyclist friends riding. So I sent him uh, an idea, said that let's call it Bosky's Wild Boars. And I said B-O-A-R-S. He sent me back a message saying, no, we are boars, B-O-R-E-S. They're very boring. So we are Bosky's wild boars. And that's my brother Arun, who people know as Bosky today, man of many parts, an absolutely lovely human being that I'm privileged to know. And uh, it's been an exceptional journey that um, we've shared so many things and including motorcycling. And if I motorcycle today and I go out on trips, very simple for me, you know. If I have to decide what bike to buy, Arun, tell me what do I need to buy. 
And I trouble him because he doesn't like giving specific answers to people. So even on social media, one of the common complaints that people have against Arun is that he never gives a direct answer. And I always put him on the spot and tell him, you need to give me a direct answer. And he never does. Right. So I think uh, in terms of an introduction, it is an absolute privilege uh, to have Arun as the first guest on the Happiness Helix podcast. I've been privileged to call him my friend. And I also uh, was professionally, I was his coach for a period of time. And uh, I keep telling him that uh, my growth as a coach owes a lot to Aru because uh, all the mistakes that I made as a coach, I made it with him. And uh, he being he, he overlooked those things. He was able to decoct, distill the essence of the advice that was given to him. And he took it and he ran with it. And uh, he actually is the reason why I think, you know, I am a reasonably decent coach today. So with that, Arun, absolute pleasure to have you here and absolute pleasure to have you as the first guest on the podcast. Welcome. Thank you. The privilege is mine too, being here. And uh, I call you Dodda. <laughs> that is the name given to you and now it is stuck. Yeah. People refer to you as Dodda. Dodda means an elder, a bigger, a larger person, not just physically, in terms of knowledge, ability, capacity, in all aspects, Dorda. So among our friends, we discuss, what do we do? Ask Dorda. Do you know about this? No. Whom do we ask? Ask Dorda. So you are a Dorda of knowledge. Thank you. You are a friend, philosopher, guide, brother, coach. Happy to be here. Thank you very much. So, I will call you Arun. Yes, please. I, I know everybody knows you as Baski. But I still call you Arun. You always call me Arun. I actually call you Aruna, <laughs> but it's okay. So, you know, the, the podcast is, is called the Happiness Helix Podcast. We've spoken a lot about it. We've traveled through various parts of this together. And uh, we've had uh, quite a few exchanges on our rides. Do you remember when we used to also have these chats when we were on our Bluetooth? Yeah, when we first got the Bluetooth. I think you were chatting for three or four hours yeah. on the way to Mysore, I don't know, somewhere. Wherever. Wherever. But we were having all these, these chatting about a whole lot of things. So the happiness helix is based on a simple premise that it's a helix going up or going coming down. So if it's going up, it's either a rope ladder or steps, steps that are slanting upward or downward, depending on where you're looking at it from. So when we are climbing up, it's that much more effortful to climb up. Coming down, it's so slanted down that it's almost like a slide. Right? It takes very little effort to just slide down the helix. So starting with right now, wherever anybody is, that's the starting part of the, of the helix. So going up, we have some landings. Coming down, we have some points because you'll be coming down in a blur that it will not be possible to say that this is a landing I can hold on. It takes a lot of effort, awareness, conscious awareness. So the happiness helix starts with this is it, this moment. If the person takes 100% responsibility for themselves, where they are in life and say, this is it. I'm responsible for whatever exists in my life. And I'm not cribbing, complaining, whining, 
or holding anybody else responsible. I am responsible. Doesn't matter what's happened in life. This is where I am. That is the beginning of the upward spiral. It takes a lot of effort. However, if I take that responsibility, chances are that I will be able to have a good attitude. What do I mean by a good attitude? An attitude where, you know what, I'm going to make this happen. I'm not going to be waiting for something else to happen. So I'm going to be taking responsibility. I'm going to make it happen. First step. First landing, good attitude. If I have a good attitude, chances are that it will get me to the second landing, which is third landing. If right now is one, second landing is good attitude. Third landing is I will be liked, I will be supported, I will have a wider circle of people that I can rely upon. I have greater sources of knowledge. Like you were saying, if you know we don't know something, let's ask Dodda kind of thing, right? you will be able to have multiple people that you can talk to. Like I have my one-stop shop for anything to do with anything electronic or automobile or whatever it is, call Arun. Right. What vehicle do I buy? Arun, tell me. So, and that's the third landing. If I have a responsible attitude, I have a good attitude. I'm taking responsibility for myself. I have a great attitude. I'm liked, I'm supported. Chances are that I'll get to the fourth landing, which is I will be able to set and achieve my goals. Set, stretch goals, smart goals, whatever you want to call them. I'll achieve them. And consistently, if I'm able to achieve my goals, it'll get, to, get me to the fifth landing, which is I'll have greater self-confidence, self-belief, and I will start knowing, you know, I can do this. I can take on a little more. And I can see you smiling because I think you, you're making a few connects with what's happened in your life. Yes, sir. And if I'm at that fifth landing, I can get to the sixth landing, which is I will take on larger objectives that are not just focused on me, but on a larger section of society, friends, family, employees, whatever it is. And when I start setting objectives that are greater than me, not just focused on me, Chances are that I'll wake up feeling energized, feeling responsible, full of energy. And as my friend Raj Sharma would say, I'd be willing to tap dance into work or whatever it is that I'm going to be doing. So that's the happiness helix going up. And there are steps that take us all over. On the way down, it starts again with this is it. But... This is it doesn't start with I'm responsible. It starts with why is my life so fill in the blanks up? Right? Why don't I get to do anything? Why doesn't anything work for me? It's because of X, Y, Z. And it could be anything from my parents didn't give me the right kind of education. They didn't give me this. The school system, government, everything and anything except me. If I'm like this, chances are that I'm not going to have a great attitude. I'm going to be cribbing, complaining, whining, and playing the victim and the martyr all the time. If I play the victim and the martyr all the time, chances are that people are not going to be liking me. They are not going to be wanting to be with me at all. And if that happens, I have a smaller and smaller circle of friends, resources. And if I had somebody and they had the wherewithal, the resources, and they had somebody else that they like better than me, they're probably going to give it to them, not to me. So I'm not going to be achieving my objectives consistently, predictably as well. Which gets me to the next point, which is I'm going to say that life is bleeped up. Right? Nothing ever happens for me. And I'm going to start losing confidence. I'm going to start complaining, cribbing even more. And I'm going to become more and more selfish. And my objectives are going to become smaller and smaller and smaller. And chances are that I'm not going to be liking who I am or people are not going to like me. Right? So this is the unhappiness slide, as I call it. And the happiness helix is the one that goes up. So this is the background. Right? I have a question for you. First, what are your thoughts about this structure itself, because this is something that that uh, it's been in the works with me, 
and I've been working on it for a while, trying to give it a structure, right? Does this make sense to you? If it does, you know, what, re what resonates with you? It makes sense, I understand, from experience. <laughs> the first step is being here, being now, accepting the present. I look at it as looking at the mirror. That is one of the, if not the most important thing you have taught me. Learn to look in the mirror. Because every answer I'm looking for is in the mirror. So That's a good place to start. When I first heard it from you, I couldn't figure it out, couldn't grasp it. Look in the mirror, see my face. I see. So I didn't like what I saw. I didn't like what I saw. So if I have to like what I'm seeing in the mirror, there's only one person who can change it. Is a person who might see in the mirror. So that's where it started. Yeah, I resonate. I understand by implementing some of these learnings of the helix, which you call it now. So, yeah, glad to be on the helix, looking up. Thank you. And I think uh, you've been one of the people who've, who've implemented it. You know, the advice that, or the learning that I've obtained, share it with everybody. There are a few like you, who actually trust yourself and implement it, right? So when you, when you talked about the mirror, I think one of the things that we keep talking about is this, right? That people have a problem with what they see in the mirror, right? And they have a problem with who holds up the mirror. Shooting the messenger is the biggest hurdle I see in many Getting over that, ignore, disregard the messenger, look at the message. If that simple step can be done, 50% of the things are clear and resolved. For example, it's typical at a traffic light, there's a white line, I should not be parking beyond that. Okay, happen to park ahead of it. Police constable walks up and says, go back, you're violated. Many people react, who are you to tell me? You are a corrupt uh, officer. You take money and do this. You don't catch that person. You don't catch this person and you're coming and pointing to me. While that is true, could be true to an extent. What about the message that has been delivered? You have crossed the line. So that is ignored. Everything else is brought into the picture. Pointless. That's where the mirror is missing. I need to see, yes, I have crossed the line. Roll back. Now I am not. Now I am where I am supposed to be. Okay, then, who are you to tell me who are you? But once I do that, it doesn't matter who has told me what. It doesn't matter. It's like a smoker telling another smoker, don't smoke. It's not good for your health. 99 out of 100 times a retort will be, who are you to tell me? The message is correct. Smoking is injurious to health. Message is forgotten. The judgment of the messenger begins. This is the biggest hurdle. That's the biggest hurdle. It took me a while to get that right in the mirror. Thanks to you, I was able to get that right. Make some changes. It's a journey. Still many changes to go. Brings me to a very interesting thing. You know, I've been thinking about it. I keep telling that the person who's contributed the greatest to my growth as a coach is you. Why? Because I don't think I was very nice about conveying the messages to you. Because at that time, I think I had, I was so invested in you. And so the investment, my love, my affection and care for you came a lot more 
in the way I conveyed my messages to you. So, uh, looking back, I probably wasn't very nice, but I was very kind because I was telling you what you needed to hear. But I could have said it today. I might, I might have said it very, very differently. But 15 years ago, when, when I started this journey with you, I was very, very, I was mostly angry with you because my, my care and concern for you overtook everything else. So my question is this very interesting thing that you said, you know what? Separate the message from the messenger or the manner in which the message is being conveyed. Correct? How did you do that? Because I think, uh, I'm sorry, I think it will be important for a lot of people who are watching this because they will have not a coach, but they will have a loved one. They will have a parent or a spouse or a brother or a sibling or a friend or a boss or a colleague, whoever it is. And they'd be giving them this information. They'd be holding up this information, this, this mirror. They'd be sharing this information. How did you and what advice would you give for people? I know advice is a strong word. I know you don't like it. What, what suggestions would you have for people to separate the message from the manner in which the message is conveyed or the messenger themselves? For me, it started with trust. I trust you completely. So it was easier for me when there is trust in place. I don't bother to judge you or find out whether you are you have earned the right to tell me to lose weight. Have you earned the right to tell me to take care of my health? Have you earned the right? No, it doesn't. you don't need to earn your right to tell me anything. I trust you. Hence, I was able to look at the message. Yes, not immediately. Message delivered, received, resisted, blocked processed over the next day, week, month, and then reflect the message was right. Messenger forgotten. Over the years, that cycle repeated, 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 repeated. Now, the time from when I received the message to the time everything else is ignored and I pick only the message and not trying to judge the messenger, not judging the messenger, not even, let me not say even try, not judging the messenger is very short now. From weeks, it's now seconds. Exception. Week, it's seconds. You'll just, anything, it can be about a motorcycle. Like you say, you ask me for motorcycle and implicitly trust me about a motorcycle. But there are times, something a word or two about a motorcycle will come from you to me. One second, the message. Not, who is Dodda to tell me about motorcycles? It even sounds stupid to me to that question. So, no, it is trust. For me, it is trust. Trust the person. Have faith that the message is being given with love and care with the intent to make me better. And for my growth, for my improvement, once that trust is in place, fell in place with you, which was right at the start, it didn't have to. It's not something somebody can work on. It's the mannerisms, the demeanor, the transparency. Yeah, you used to get angry. You had a temper. And you have pasted me several times. I mean, talk about pasting. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't slept for days sometimes properly. It's It doesn't matter anymore because everything was worth it. So it starts from place of trust. Once I trust somebody, a messenger is not important. The message becomes more important. I haven't uh, slept for uh, days thinking about what I'm going to tell you, right? And I'm not going to apologize now because it is what it is, right? My question, which follows from here again for 
somebody who's watching this and looking at it saying, these are two great friends. So it's easy to trust one another. I have a different question for you. How has this manifested itself in the way you take an information from anybody, even a stranger? Has this brought about a structural change in you in terms of processing information from anybody, even a stranger? Yes. Okay. Yes. Anybody and everybody. The only difference from a message received from a person I trust and somebody whom I don't know, say for example on social media, mm -hmm. is the time. Mm -hmm. Like I said, it takes a few seconds for me to receive, process the message from you. It may take a little bit longer, especially on social media, because it's completely a strange place. There are strangers. The anonymity of the internet is amazing. And it takes me days, weeks sometimes to process a message that has come across rude, as rude to me. Initial reaction, resist, ignore, but I cannot ignore it. It, it, is, it is processing, it is processing, it is processing. So from reaction to inaction, process, respond. Lovely. From reaction to inaction to process to respond as appropriate. Wow. You know, very interesting that you talk about social media, right? And uh, you are quite the celebrity now, right? And I'm very happy to know that you're the celebrity. Accidental celebrity. It doesn't. I don't think it's there is an accident at all because I think you use the the happiness helix as well because you did set an up set, set an objective, you went about it right, you did what we needed to do, which is the eighty twenty of the eighty twenty of the eighty twenty, which we will talk about in the happiness helix as well sometime, where you decocted distilled the essence of how to be successful, which is to be there, and do something of value. We'll come to that. I, I have a few questions around around uh, Big Bear reviews and what you do, right? which is absolutely amazing work, right? I think your questions will help answer some of the questions I myself have. I don't have answers. Absolutely, absolutely. So you said something very interesting about trust, right? I heard this from Master Kichu. And uh, he said, uh, a relationship of any kind, there are three pillars. And he used it, he said, love, trust, respect. These are the three pillars of a relationship. And it just stuck with me. And I would, when I was, I would keep on throwing it about in my head, which comes first. What comes first in this, right? Because you said trust, I realized, and this is my verbalization of what's been there for probably 20 years of throwing it around in my head. Of the three of love, trust and respect that Master Kichu told me, I think respect is dependent entirely on me because I can choose to respect you regardless of who you are, what you are. Because respect for you depends only on me. Love and a subset like. I don't think I can explain love. I don't think anybody can explain what love is. It's a little like quality in Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. We know if it's there. We know when it's not there. But we can't define what it is that defines quality. Same thing for love. So I think love is the absence of negative emotions where I feel absolutely safe. I don't need to worry about, you know, I know you're not good, you're, you've got my back. So that I think is when I can be myself is love. And when I have that love, I'm able to open up a little more about myself and share something about me because I know you're not going to take advantage of me. And the more I keep sharing and the more you keep 
reiterating, yeah, you're safe. I'm not going to abuse the information that you've shared with me. It becomes trust. So respect, love and trust is what I'm thinking. So for us, we had this relationship where we were able to develop this trust. Right. I think we had mutual respect for each other. It was a given. We liked being in each other's presence. We liked sharing time with each other, which led us to be able to share so much more of one another with each other, which then developed into that trust that you're talking about. What would you say that, again, social media, anonymity, and uh, because people are anonymous, they can say any damn thing, right? And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just reminded of the Tamil saying, Nakula Narambillama Pesadu. But there is no, there are no nerves, there is no sensory organ in the tongue, and people can just spew any venom, any nonsense that they can. In a business scenario, when you're dealing with people, right, and you deal with principles, you have sometimes the boat is on that foot, right, and you might have certain views, but you just have to just suck it up and do what you're asked to do. Right. In that kind of a scenario, how do you process this kind of information and feedback that you get? Trust for me is a default setting. Very interesting. Thanks to my parents. First thing is trust. It is nobody has to earn my trust. It can only be lost. That's how my mother and my father have taught. Anybody, everybody, I'm not speaking about social media. People I meet, I speak. When I hear something from anybody, I take it for as it is. That is the default setting for me. Until something happens to change that. So default is trust. My principals, employees. I may digress a little. Talking about employees, I'll give an, I'll, I'll speak about something. Um, at the time, some time back, we had more than 250 employees on the payroll of varying social standing, varying financial strengths. And many of them have only one place to ask and request for money outside of the salary. Some expense to meet, a lump sum needed. Yes, out of 10, one may not be fully honest with the need for that money. However, the nine genuine requirements because of one who may have used the money for a purpose other than what stated in the application, I had no intent and do not have any intent to penalize the nine. It's okay if one gets away, it doesn't matter because the other nine have actually benefited. So even the tenth there has been no loss of trust. Maybe they are not able to express the true reason. I'll never know. I'm happy to be grateful to be in a position to be able to give than be in a position to ask and wonder if I'm going to get it or not. So, uh, I thank also my employers. When I was an employer, I had a very harsh employer, mm -hmm. harsh in terms of uh, his communication, messages, demeanor, always hard, harsh. There was never a nice, uh, appropriately worded message. Everything was with a hammer, boom, boom. But one thing always, on the first of every month, irrespective of what day it is, Whatever salary promised will hit my bank account.
and if the first is a holiday i will receive it on the 31st if 31st is also a holiday i'll get it on 30th if there are five bank holidays just for a scenario i'll get it on 25th to that boss of mine a salary was non negotiable he used to say that is why i am an employer and that is why you are an employee my job is to pay you on time i will do my job now you do your job very interesting so these are the learnings um, which have um, gotten to gotten me to where i am how i am and why i am what i am yeah he was a good boss tough bosses yeah. now i remember reading something somewhere they rarely have people who have made a difference to your life been nice to you they've been very tough with you is what they said right parents teachers bosses well wishers sometimes uh, very difficult to distinguish between a best friend and a worst enemy because both of them sound almost the same the intent probably is the only difference yeah i have over the years several friends still my friends i don't make the effort to contact them that's okay i let it be if they do come and get in touch with me happy to i will not initiate because of that trust eroded but i guess with that person comes and sits in front of me it's not going to change he's still my friend <laughs> he's still my friend that's okay i don't need to carry any grudges or hate not worth it not at all worth it the only person who will suffer with a hate grudge is myself absolutely no but it's absolutely you know when you said uh, my parents have taught me to to trust right as the default option as me for this reminded of uh, an exchange that i came across in a podcast the knowledge project shane parish and uh, jim collins and jim collins actually talks about his mentor i forget the name i think bill somebody and he said bill told me always lead with an opening bid of trust always lead with an opening bid of trust i trust you it's up to you now to either be worthy of it or to tell me that i need to be careful with you but i'm going to lead with trust i thought that was very very powerful and i think that's that's something that we learn and uh, several businesses i have dabbled in you know all of them some of them didn't work out financially default with those brands i dealt with had interactions with was trust didn't work out business closed dealings shut loss of some money on no, next business that did not change my trust in the next business i enter that business with trust again because that is the default setting that is the way to go if three four failures for my how i perceive it as they cheated me they deceived me they robbed me they are responsible for my losses i can never start another business and hope for any kind of success i allowed them to deceive me i was not vigilant enough i did not do my due diligence i did not do enough research so next time i will do better research i will do better due diligence and i will enter the business and it has so happened sometimes that has also not worked out that's okay i didn't do a good job let me do a better job next time i don't have any issues with three businesses 
I remember them quite well because financially they were quite severe. I mean, the impact, the negative impact, the losses. I I am at peace with them. If I do meet them, which I probably will, it's a small world. We may end up meeting. I will still meet, greet, chat with them. If they have another proposal, I will pay full attention, listen to it, always open. That doesn't change because that is me. Others' behavior will not change who I am. Because if it does change my behavior, then that is not me. I am that. What? So, it's me. It's me. I'm, I'm responsible. I'm going to take a small segue. You know, when we're talking about the helix, right? Landing one, responsibility. Landing two is good attitude. Landing three is liked and supported wide circle. All of this becomes a little vague and ambiguous for most people. They don't, it doesn't compute for many of them. So in my coaching practice, I start with landing four, which is set an objective. Set an objective, a stretch objective, something that will really make my eyes go bright and wide, right? And it doesn't really matter. It is about that's the goal that I want to achieve, right? And I also tell them, it should be an objective that really gets you to go gaga. And it should be something that you know can be achieved, but you should know how you're going to achieve it. Because if you know how you're going to achieve it, then the rubber band is not going to stretch enough. So you need to make it really stretch. So the reason I'm talking about that, I remember a conversation with you once. When uh, in one business, I think we were on a ride. And... Uh, we were talking about what was the objective and we had a number and you said this is the number that I am actually doing and we sat and chatted and the number that we came up with in three years time was 30 times what you were doing. I couldn't compute. You couldn't compute. Yeah, I remember that. So my question is this. I still remember for 36 months, we had set an objective. 35th month, you call me and you tell me, done. But next month, I will actually overachieve what we had spoken about three years ago. But I'm choosing not to because it's going to put a strain on the system. I can achieve it, right? So I have an interesting question for you on this. That objective, right? And I also remember the biggest problem that you mentioned. I don't control supplies. Yep. How in God's name do you expect me to grow the business 30 fold when I don't control any supplies to me? I can only take what's given to me and sell. Right. But then I did ask you a few questions, but I, I'm not going to say what you said. Right. I want you to tell me how did you manage a 30-fold increase of business month on month in 36 months, 35 months actually. By looking at what is in my control. There is nothing I can do about how many of those goods the manufacturer can make. There is nothing I can do about the bank whose policies do not permit lending me more than a certain amount of money. What can I do about it? Only one. Generate more demand. Present the demand to the bank and to the manufacturer and say, this is the demand I have. Give me. I didn't believe it was going to work. <laughs> Thanks to you, I decided yes. There's only one thing I can do, create demand. So let me do what I can do. Forget the manufacturer, their capacity constraint. Forget the bank, it's a bank. Policies do not allow them to lend me more money. That's not going to stop me from creating demand. Let me create the demand and see what happens. Magic. 
<laughs> the manufacturer whether they made more or not i do not know perhaps they got the produce from allocated to other regions to me because i had generated the most demand the bank saw trust in this business because the business has got a lima got a lot of demand so we can lend them money repayment likely to happen default chances are less so they changed i would say changed they had a provision which i did not know about so boom products come working capital also comes and it was a it's a snowball effect more demand more supply more working capital more demand more supply more working capital less working capital after some time because the profits were going into repay the working capital which gave the bank more confidence to offer even more money at lower interest because now they were worried i would leave them and go to another bank so i worked on what i could control the rest happen if i were to say what you said a little differently there was this objective you are very clear about the objective right and to make sure that that objective was achieved you made sure that you had the right kind of support from all the people that you needed to right and to get that support from people you took responsibility yes 100% responsible yes but i remember this question that i asked you when you know when we started this this chat i asked you this question 3 years from today what is your objective and uh, i remember the answer you said i want to be number 1 in sales and service all india and i remember what i asked you i said number 1 in sales and service all india here four times revenue five times profit in this sand they are mutually exclusive choose and your answer was instantaneous four times revenue five times profit i am in this for business this is an economic enterprise i don't care if i am number 1 or number 100 as long as my revenue and my profits are four fold and five fold right and i think that level of responsibility that level of clarity objective in terms of why am i doing what i am doing it's not just about what i am doing but why am i doing what i am doing this is a business enterprise right so when you talk about responsibility i'm going to take a, a diametrically opposite direction like you to tell me somewhere where you have not displayed that responsibility and the consequences that have resulted for you because you know it shouldn't be that you know everything is hunky dory that we are paragons of virtue neither neither you nor i are paragons of virtue both of us have been on the unhappiness slide for a long time both of us have learned the hard way to climb the happiness helix like you said i had a temper right that was my biggest stumbling block everything else got overshadowed because of my temper so i needed to work on that so i needed to take responsibility for making sure that people understood me exactly the way i i wanted to be understood right so i'd like to ask you some instances of you being on the downward slide right is to make it believable for people otherwise people will think that you know you and i are scripting something here okay. now <laughs> i have holes in my underwear also so <laughs> <laughs> i would put it that way <laughs> we all have holes <laughs> it's not that perfect <laughs> as long as it's still the underwear <laughs> out of sight yeah there are holes in the system <laughs> yeah uh yeah there are uh, two that spring to my mind mm-hmm. one was during uh, the pandemic mm-hmm. and the other was pre pandemic mm-hmm. one was on the business side mm-hmm. one was on the health side mm-hmm. 
I did not take responsibility for either. Let me speak about the health. Mm-hmm. Lifestyle habits. Mm-hmm. Decades of lifestyle habits took their toll. While I was aware of what I was doing, didn't bother to draw a line, set some controls, or take responsibility for what I was doing. And then the alarm bells rang health-wise. That point, it was, there was only one way to go. Or rather, let me say, there were two ways to go. <laughs> one is to go. <laughs> or the other, I will do my damnedest best not to just go. I can get back. And I did. I did. Climbed. You climbed. I got a spiral rope ladder. Yes. I got back. My family, even today, is grateful and appreciative of the efforts I put in. Because I'm speaking of lifestyle habits of decades. And uh, I did not surprise myself by doing it. Nor did I assume I will be able to do it. I just did it because I had to do it. Very interesting. I'm going to interject here. What made it possible to almost, because I, I've seen, I saw what you did. You flipped a switch. Overnight, you flipped a switch. I did. Right? How did you do that? And what made it possible for you to have that conviction? One, the strength of, I don't want to use the word character, but the strength of discipline to adhere to it. My family and friends who are near and dear to me, if they were to lose me, I have a sense of how much that it can impact them. I didn't want to put any of them through that. Dependent, non-dependent. Maybe they don't really need to depend financially on me. They care for me. They love me. Me being here is a far better option than me not being here. Mm, very interesting. It was more viewed that way. Uh, when it's one goes, one goes. I don't, I don't think anything there to discuss in that, that angle. That person is gone. But that absence will be felt by the near and dear ones. We see in our lives when people lose their near and dear ones. The pain, the suffering. Some last a lifetime. It may not be visible, but that suffering continues. And if there is something I could do to avoid that, yes, there was something I could do and I did it. Okay. That was on the health front. Yes. You said something about the business. Because I think I think health is something that and and it was clear and the way you've said it, you know, there were two ways in which I could have gone. One, I could have become healthier. Or I could have really gone. So, in that sense, it was really not an option worth considering the other one. So, it made it that much. In business, it's not that way, right? It's never a, you know, health sometimes is a one-way door. Health sometimes is a one-way door, not always. You managed to make it a, a two-way door and you, you clawed back. So, hats off to you. In business... More often than not, it's a two-way door. What I mean by two-way door is it's not a door that's shut forever. You can always... Right? So, on the hell, on the, on the, on the business front, what happened and how did you manage that? Pandemic times, we are all aware of how difficult things were. 
several businesses closed down and uh, my business was also in a bit of trouble because there was no business there was no rotation unable to pay the overheads pay the salaries and i mentioned a little earlier there were more than 250 employees and the business the nature of the business i was in most of the employees are from a economically weaker background with a sole breadwinner working so i could multiply that 250 by 4 on a on a rough estimate i would say they were a, about a thousand people dependent on my business being healthy being able to pay wages on time mm -hmm. the first way was bad in terms of scaring the delights out of me however things got better and we continued say yes all right we are here now let's get going the second wave scared the pants off me i realize it's uh, it's going to be very difficult to get up and all thoughts run into run in the mind it's not just a business threat it is also a threat to life yeah yeah if something were to happen to me a thousand people could get affected if something were to happen to a near and dear one what would i do if something was happen something happened to a couple of people in the bank who were supportive of me what would happen to me if something happened to the couple of people who were supportive to me in the company whose goods i was trading in what would happen several weeks went by i was on complete downward spiral this was probably worse than my health scare so you mentioned the business is a two way door but somehow this frightened me far 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 more than my recovery from the health issue and then my dodda coaches training came in we were not able to meet those were the uh, lockdowns and restrictions and i was on such a downward spiral that i became a loner sat in my room we were in isolation anyway brooding 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 going deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and i got into that mode of watching the terrible news because that's what circulates right we don't share good news as a human society we forward only bad news even further down and down and i don't know for what reason one night among the many nights i woke up sweating i said to myself what can i do about it why am i sweating shaking shivering in the middle of the night the ac is on the fan is running and i'm sweating cold sweat i said i need to have a plan i am going through all this because i don't have a plan for whatever reason i think it is something to do with my years and decades of sharing time with you and this practice of writing an objective you said that landing for because as already somewhere down the spiral the only thing that makes sense to me was landing for look in the mirror take responsibility was all out of the window he just didn't compute yeah landing four to start back to basics what do i want to do started writing i remember you sharing that with me yeah i started writing all that was running through my mind was disaster death disaster death that's all okay use disaster and death and write what all can happen 
I may die. My business would shut her down. I would be on the streets. Somebody whom I love and care for may die. I may lose this person. I started writing every possible scenario, wildest scenario. Nothing was out of syllabus. Everything was accepted. Everything was accepted. I was sitting through the night writing page after page, only the heading. Because I had a plan. <laughs> I wrote it. For example, I would die. That's the first thing I wrote. Okay. What can I do about it? I can't do anything about it if I die. So if I'm going to die, what should I do before I die? Okay. Examples. In no specific order of seniority or importance. One. Do my family members know what all bank accounts I have? Do they know the investments I have made? Do they know the liabilities I have? Do they have access to my accounts? Do they know the passwords? Do they know the OTPs, the PINs, the insurance policies I have, the health policies I have? I say, stupid. Who is it for? I wrote everything down. This is further down the line I'm going, just picking that one aspect. All my assets, personal assets, company assets are in the books. Company liabilities are in the books. Nobody needs to do research. It's there with the auditors. Now. Personal assets and liabilities, which I hadn't bothered to tell anybody. Listed everything down in a Google Drive. Shared the link with the people who matter to me. Said, good. If I die, this is one. Many expressed shock at this email. My father did not. He was supportive, appreciative without saying a word. So, he had done something like that some time back. So, he knew it is a good move. So, every possible scenario I wrote down, Everything. It didn't end with one night. It took me several nights, several pages. I must have written about 60 or 70 headings. And below that, between 50 and 100 different scenarios. When I thought I have exhausted everything, I still came up with some more. And then when I actually had finished, accounted for every scenario my brain could think of, I slept. Well, because I have accounted for everything and I have a plan for everything. How I implement it, we will come to that. But now I have a plan. Nothing can surprise me. I had even written, we will have to leave this country on foot and maybe <laughs> walk into some other country. That could be riots. I think hell can break loose. What do I do? Money is not, rupees are not going to get me anywhere. So I need US dollars. Okay, so I exchanged some rupees for some US dollars. And I got small currencies. I got $1 bills, $5 bills, $10 bills. And I got gold coins, one gram gold coins. I said, yes, sometimes maybe the people don't want dollar. They'll take gold. If I have to buy my way into Sri Lanka, I will do it. <laughs> See, this is the wild... <laughs> <laughs> the extremes I, I had gone to. So when I had accounted for the extremes, I could sleep. And yes, that is where I am today was born. Very interesting. You know, I think um, one of the things that uh, I tell all my clients is where and why is the first step. Where do I want to be? And why do I want to be there? The next step is how do I get there? 
And after that comes the what do I do, then the when, and then the who else. Finally, the rubber meets the road when I actually do it. Right? So I think very interestingly when, when you looked at the where, the why, and you looked at everything that could go wrong. I remember we doing this exercise, you know, the one that I call the P2S2. Right? When we look at all the problems that can happen, how can we prevent it from happening? What are we going to do in case it all the prevention doesn't work? And then what kind of support do I need from home? And I think you implemented that beautifully. So I'm going to ask a different question. I'm going to go to a different place. Today, you are uh, a social media influencer. Last count, you had what? 300,000 followers, 400,000 followers on Insta? 180. 180, okay. And then YouTube, another 160. 160. And uh, I've seen the, uh, the effects of that. When we go out on a ride and there are people who come and say, this is Bosky, so, you know, big bear, I'd like to take a picture with you kind of thing, right? How did that happen? Why did that happen? And how did that happen? That is a consequence. Is it? I just did what I enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. All I focused is on what gives me joy, satisfaction, happiness. I just did it responsibly. That's it. I put out what I thought will resonate with me. Mm -hmm. It is not about people liking. Mm -hmm. It's not about whether they will like it, whether they will comment it, when they share it. Mm -hmm. Didn't matter at all. Mm -hmm. Still doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. But do I check? Oh, of course I check. Mm -hmm. How many shares, how many likes? Yes. Mm -hmm. When I create a video or when I write down a subject, that is something which resonates with me. Mm -hmm. I will just put it out. Everything else is a consequence. doesn't matter. And I've learned this lesson several times. What I think will fly crashes and burns. <laughs> <laughs> what I think will... It may not go past the first couple of hours. Then it will disappear in the vast ocean of social media. Takes off like a rocket. So I stopped even bothering to judge whether this will fly or it will not fly because I don't decide whether it flies or not. Not at all. So what do I decide? Just put out content that I like. And if I don't have content, doesn't matter. No anxiety. Yeah, I used to be anxious. Who I missed today. <laughs> nah, doesn't matter. No content for the sake of content. Nah. Doing what I like what I like to see, is it something I will listen to? Mm -hmm. Will I listen to myself? Mm -hmm. I have a lot of recordings I have deleted and jumped. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I can't sit through it myself. Others could have, I don't know. But if I can't watch it, I'm not going to put it out. So it's all about moi. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, on that if I can't watch it, I'm not going to put it out, right? Um, the first episode of the podcast, I spoke. The second episode also, I've spoken alone, right? So when the first episode was, was shared with me, the edited version, I was surprised. I, I pleasantly surprised myself by being able to watch it at one go without flinching, without looking at me and saying, oh, did you do this kind of thing? So I can absolutely relate to what you're saying, which is if I can watch it, if I can feel good about seeing myself, hearing myself, I'm all right. I've done my best. Yeah, it's literally exactly what I wanted to say. Did I do my best? Absolutely. In this reel? Absolutely. Yes, we can always do better. Given a second chance at after viewing it. But that's only in hindsight. Yes, exactly. After viewing it, I could have done better. At that moment, with the knowledge I have, 
at that moment, that instant, now have I done my best. Oh, yes. It ends there. Actually, you know, it, it, this, is, this is practical application of what I share with a lot of people. And you know the daily growth checklist that we talk about. Did I do my best? Today, did I do my best too, right? And you are the first person that I shared that with. The first person I said, you know, start doing this on a daily basis. Thanks for that. Right. And you started doing it. I saw you adhering to it so well that I started doing it myself, right? So the thing is, today did I do my best too. And if I'm doing my best in that moment, Right. In hindsight, I can always find a hundred thousand things that I could have done better. But in that moment, have I done my best? And I think that, if I can put it, that authenticity, that authenticity is what makes your videos worth watching. Actually, this, this afternoon I was uh, looking at YouTube and the, the video that you'd made day before uh, came up. And I was watching and... Uh, Amma was there and I was telling her, Amma, this is where we had gone over the weekend. We had gone for a ride and, you know, uh, her, and I said, do you know who's speaking? And she looked at the video and she says, uh, Arun. I said, yeah, Arun. He's become so thin. I said, yes. Right. So I think the one thing that she, she doesn't know anything about motorcycling. Right. But she watched for about 10 minutes and she says, and she said it in Tamil, he really likes what he's doing, isn't he? I said, of course, Amma. And that, that shows, right? I think you need to love, love it. Right? So which brings me to a question. You mentioned that, you know, the Big Bear reviews, something that you really like doing. It resonates with you. If you can watch the video without cringing and you think that you'd like to watch the video, pop it goes out, right? And therefore, you know, so you're turning up as an authentic version of yourself when you're doing all of this. And you want to do it. You love doing it. I remember hearing this in a TED talk by Richard St. John when uh, he talks about the secrets of success, the eight secrets of success. I think it was given in 2004, the talk, Richard St. John, three-minute TED talk. In that, one of the things that he says, and I use that now, I get paid to do what I will pay to do. And I think you and I, we spoke about it, right? Whether it's Big Bear here, or the reviews that you do, you would pay to do it because it allows you to be your authentic self, unvarnished. This is who you are. This is why you are, more importantly. So a lot of us, we understand this. There are things that we really want to do, we love doing, we turn up and we are 100%. We are doing our best. I also know something about you, and I know it about myself, that there are times when you've had to do things that you really don't want to be doing. You really don't like doing. And you still do it. And I've seen you do it initially, not because you wanted to do it. And that's where, you know, having a coach was useful. But then, you made sure that you did it not just like you wanted to do it, you really wanted to do it because you understood something, right? What made that possible? And I'd like you to really delve deep into this because I, there are so many people out there who are going through life saying, I have to. Right? Kichu Master told me the first time I told him I have to. He told me, Chino, the only thing that you have to do in life is die. In everything else, you have a choice. Exercise that choice is what he told me. Right? In your life, where you've had to face situations that left to yourself, you wouldn't want to do it, you wouldn't do it. 
but then you did it if you're okay share some examples and i'd like to hear really hear from you the thought process that went in for you to make that flip from i have to do it to i want to do it several times it happens even now it's not that everything i do now is what i want to do i accept if it is something i have to do yes there is some thought that goes behind it i think about it if i do it what are the consequences what will be the outcome or why am i having to do it because of this a little bit of analysis is it going to benefit in a way that is beneficial may not be directly to me it can be to somebody else once that is clear i will do it do it 100% focused on doing it there is no middle ground in that for me i may grumble but the execution will be 100% otherwise i won't do it i don't do it an example social media mm-hmm. about a particular brand mm-hmm. an item mm-hmm. or whatever it is mm-hmm. i choose not to name the item or the brand there was an opportunity to speak about it and there are returns for speaking about it mm-hmm. i chose not to mm-hmm. i could not after evaluation after much thought i would be lying speaking a part of the truth mm-hmm. is okay mm-hmm. a complete lie is not okay <laughs> it's difficult mm-hmm. thought about it for a long time mm-hmm. i even rehearsed pretending mm-hmm. to be speaking about that item and that brand i have my great mobile camera i speak to myself and then look at myself and say you lying bastard <laughs> i i said you can't sell that to me no my um heart was not in it so i said i will not do it it comes at a cost not just now it can have ripples down the line that's okay because if it is so much of a deterrent that i just cannot pull it off i rather not get into it do it neither will i be do justice to that brand not to the people who have faith in me mm-hmm. let it go it is a switch there is no thermostat it's not a temperature control it's either on or off mm-hmm. there is no right decision wrong decision whatever decision i choose i stick with it and stick with it 100% and i am convinced and i do not second guess myself whether i should have done it or not because i have evaluated properly and taken a call if i have to do it i will do it i will do it i have done some things which i don't like to do mm-hmm. several things mm-hmm. i still continue to do mm-hmm. i have convinced myself i must do it whether i like it or not it's a it's a mind that's that's the that's the question how do you convince yourself because that might be useful for somebody out there listening to this right they might have such situations so how do you convince yourself i look further down the line by doing this by doing a good job of this mm-hmm. what was what will be the outcome what is going to be the benefit is it for the greater benefit of all concerned mm-hmm. so if i am going to bite my tongue mm-hmm. and do something and it is going to benefit in whatever way mm-hmm. not necessary financial it can be in any way mm-hmm. why not do it enjoy it because the outcome mm-hmm. is a reward for that 
tongue biting experience <laughs> i have done some things like that cursed under my breath <laughs> but pulled it off and then when i hear some appreciation acknowledgement not for what i did we achieved a result that result has made a few people happy safe secure and they speak among themselves i don't need to receive the appreciation that itself is appreciation for me i said yes job well done let it go interesting it's not about me at that in that occasion it is not about me no the greater good yeah no it's greater good isn't it's too much of a word to use <laughs> I'm I'm sorry I'm just um, yeah greater good I, it came to my mind but I didn't want to say the greater good because for a larger number beyond you yeah yeah for more than just you just me yeah let's let's say let's say that yeah uh, like a simple thing uh, like attending a dinner mm-hmm. at a place which I am not fond of mm-hmm. with people I am not fond of <laughs> because someone whom i care for wants me to be there mm-hmm. and if it makes that person happy mm-hmm. i will go mm-hmm. i am not going to go there and sit call a grown for your sulk i might as well not go yeah. make an excuse purposely travel out of town that weekend i have done that too but i have been there and at the end of the day i say hey, it is not bad it's okay so uh, it's about others ultimately you say you know dodda everything i do i do it for me oh i did it for my mother yes you did it for your mother and now your mother is happy and then what happens i am happy yeah oh i did it for uh, this organization this or often i i made a donation there so uh, the child is so happy i did it for the child yes you did it for the child and then what happened the child is happy yes and then what happened i am happy there is nothing i do is for others everything is for me absolutely so when i do something which i don't like okay one two people are happy I say okay all right i am happy i don't i don't take many things seriously nowadays there were times when i took everything too seriously mm, tell me about it so <laughs> 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 it doesn't mean i don't get annoyed i don't get pissed off i don't curse of course i do far lesser better than yesterday hmm that's all i can hope to do today hmm be better than yesterday hmm may not be on a consistent basis analyze over a period of time oh yes 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 it's not the best that you could in that moment with that level of awareness yes um a friend is divorced is okay. it and uh, was regretting that decision mm-hmm. thinking looking back i shouldn't have done it mm-hmm. maybe i could have stayed we could have stayed together we could have done that and then this i said when was that I said uh, 20 years ago i said 20 years ago did you know what you know today no i said then why blame yourself at that point in time you took a decision that felt right at that time mm-hmm. would you do that today no but that's not today accept it and move on anyway so come you know coming that you're talking about this one of the things that i get uh, into a lot these days is is these kinds of decisions where people are talking about should we stay together should we part ways 
um, and one of the things that I've held very dear to me is the only question that I ask when a couple comes to me for any kind of relationship coaching. I ask them, are there, do you have children? And the answer is yes. I say I have only one rule, one inviolable rule. That if you have children, separation is not an option. Right? Because the children did not ask to be born. I know there are quite a few people who will disagree with me. I've had situations where there have been really abusive marriages as well. Abusive relationships, why marriages? And there are children involved. And I still say that, you know, we need to make sure that we are together, the two of you together, for the sake of the children that did not ask to be born or did not ask to be adopted. Right. So, yes. And one of the things that I tell people is 20 years from today, with all the experience, the knowledge and awareness that you would have gathered over 20 years of living life, how would you want to look back at today? I understand that you're in pain right now. The relationship isn't working. The three pillars, love, trust and respect. One or all three of them are in poor shape. Right? And can you find it in you? How do we start? Right? Which brings me to and I always ask them this one question. What kind of a relationship do you want with the other? And this is the question I ask them. What kind of a relationship do you want in life? And if you have children, what kind, what would your children want for themselves in their life? So write down what do I want for me in my life, in this relationship? From my children's perspective or the child's perspective, what would they want in their life? What would they want for their life? Write it down. And then I ask them to do something very interesting. For this to happen in my life, who should I be? Who should I be such that I have this kind of a relationship. When I say who, people say, what do you mean role? I say, no, no, no. What are the adjectives and attributes that will describe you as a human being? That will ensure that you have this kind of a relationship, this kind of a life that you're living. Not one of constant strife, etc., etc. Most people, and then this is the sad part, they write down this, they're able to write down who they should be and all of that. But they don't, when I ask them to write down what would your children want. I've had situations where people have said, no, we're not going to write this. We're not going to write this down. I just can't be with this person. So I say, okay, your child is whatever. And I'm talking about really young children also. Five years old and three years old and three years old and two years old. Right. What would your three-year-old son or daughter or what would your two-year-old son or daughter, what would they want in their life 20 years from today? Write it from their perspective. And I've had 99% of the people who write this down, they dedicate themselves to making sure that their relationship works. Right? This combination. What kind of a relationship do I want in my life? For that relationship, who should I be? If I have children, what kind of a life would my children want? And for my children to have the life that they want for the next 20 years, when they're adults and all of those things, right? For that, who should I be as a parent? When this exercise is done, most people, they make, make the relationship work. Like you said, it's not something that they want to do. It's something that they have to do. And they look at the larger, sort of, the greater good of the family, of those children. Right? I have been surprised though. 
when a few people have said, no, we won't write it from our children's perspective. And I was curious. In one case, I asked them, why? And they said, we know what they want, but that's not what I want. God. And I said, and I, there's a first, only time that I, I actually said this, there is a special place. If you believe in hell, for people like you. Because you know that this is what your children want. And you're still not willing to let go of, I am right. And it's not that, you know, I'm not talking about the partner being a vile, reprehensible person now. By no stretch of imagination is the partner a vile, reprehensible person. Right? Uh, I know that there are outliers in all of this. But when you say this 20 years from today, there's a question which brings me to another question which I want to ask you. What are things that have happened in life that you wished you had done it differently? With the hindsight, with the wisdom, the awareness, the lot, you know, the knowledge, experience that you've gained. What are things? I know that those are the things that have made you who you are today. I'm aware of that. I also know that we are not going to be talking about, I wish I had done it differently. No, that's not what we're talking about. What are things if you had this kind of knowledge and awareness, you might have done differently in life. I would have been kinder to many people, many more people. Starting with yourself? Yeah, yeah I know. I expected you to ask that or make that statement. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I would have been kinder to myself. Uh, for not doing things which I could have done, should have done, would have done. Doesn't matter anymore, but yes. Uh, I would have taken care of my health better. And saved me some sleepless nights. And saved a lot of my near and dear ones for sleepless nights. I didn't need to put them to <laughs> put them through all of this. Those are the two things that mainly come to my mind. Um, because I haven't thought of it in a while. Simply because it doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. This is it. Yeah. I, right now, I said, yeah, I could have been kinder overall. I could have been nicer to you. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's okay. Not necessary. That's you. That's you. So it's about, that's, a, that's the only thing. Um, giving an example of what I could have done better, but it's not in that list. But just sharing, since we are speaking about what I could have done better. I was a better father to my second daughter than I was to my first daughter. Mm -hmm. Because I know more. Mm -hmm. So when I look back, I said, ah, I was a bit hard on my first daughter. I pushed her too much. Mm. Second daughter, I didn't do that. It was a different way. Mm -hmm. So, at that time, what do I know? We don't practice being a father. Mm -hmm. Bang, father. That's it. So, there is no uh, practice for that. The only practice is the second daughter. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things, hindsight, looking back. However, this change happened long back. Once I let go, things were different. I was trying to hold on too much. Yeah. Things were different for me and for her. Yeah. She actually became what she awesome. was truly capable of when I let her go. Or rather, when I tried to stop controlling her, which I didn't know I was doing. She was average in school. Lower classes. Average. 
just like me and like <laughs> and like her mother also her mother and i both are very average so she was also average and i used to look at her and say like us only like us only but why not better like us only why not better that why not better came a little later like us only i could have left it but then why not better kind of messed with it and then she became worse than us <laughs> there i told uh, wife i i said uh, never mind let her be why she will be okay magic excelled she excelled are you proud i said i am waiting to anything maybe that's what we should have done do nothing let her be what she is so um, that's that's something yeah. yeah yeah we don't know we look back it's okay you know happy that i let it go happy where she is doesn't matter any what matters is now is she happy now she is happy now yeah what we did to our parents <laughs> thank god my daughter didn't do what i did to my parents yeah as uh, as you know my children haven't done that what i have done <laughs> to my parents <clears throat> thankfully not right so out there you know something out to those parents out there and aspiring parents right don't make your children a vessel for second hand dreams let them live their own lives let them be the best version of themselves right uh, what you're saying reminds me of uh, what uh, ustad uh, zakir hussain said about his father apparently uh, he was playing and he was just doing and, and this this interview where he speaking about it is out there on youtube beautiful absolutely beautiful and he says that uh, it was very difficult to get his father sir allah rakha to to actually come in and say something apparently at one concert somebody came and said your son played just like you and ustad allah rakha said i wish and hope he's different and then he apparently said something very beautiful he said i am done i want him to be the best version of himself that is when zakir hussain pandit zakir ustad zakir hussain says that he started doing something different and he would practice and he says this beautifully he's out there you should watch this on on youtube where he said that the only time he would actually play something he would be practicing and his father would come and say ha huh, that's different ha huh. so i think you know as parents one of the one of the things that what you've shared so beautifully and which i practice completely um and and this is what uh, kichu master told me he said your children are absolutely lucky to have you and him as their parents because you haven't put pressure you haven't tried to live your dreams through your children with allowed them to blossom and i think out there uh, i think there is a fine line fine line as parents we are not sure the fear of the unknown takes over what if what if what if the unending what if loop the exit the only exit out of an unending what if loop is death hmm. right so i think out there parents out there aspiring parents should probably learn how to be there but not control right just allow their children to be the best version of themselves it happens without being very aware of it that control only hindsight who that is not right to what i was doing yeah and even if somebody mentions it it does not register it did not nobody mentioned it to me however it did not register it's when the second daughter was born 
I realized what I could have done better. So once I realized, changed. Can't go back and do anything. What can I do about something right now? Yeah. Change now. Do it now. Yeah. On that note, you know what? I actually, I, I know you've done this. Uh, you've shared this with me and I've done this as well. Where I've gone back to my children and apologized for my behavior. You know, at that point in time, what I did was with my level of awareness there, it was scare, concern, more fear than anything else. And so I'm sorry, I've said that. right? And I think that's made the relationship that I have with my children a lot closer. right? And I, uh, I, I would like to think that they're a little more, they find me a lot more approachable than most others. But that's, uh, the jury is still out. I have, I have said that to my first daughter. I said I did the best I could with what I knew of being a father. Mm. Given another chance, I would do much better. She said, never mind, that's okay. You have done a good job with my sister. Yeah. Yeah. I said, all right, that's a certificate. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, in the... In social media, right? You have a lot of people who appreciate what you're doing, right? I'm certain there are a certain percentage of people who take pot shots at you. How do you handle that? I am still learning to handle that and I'm getting better. It rankles me. Or used to rankle me a lot more than it does now. This is now it bothers me much less. It still bothers me mm -hmm. because I feel I have done my best, mm -hmm. shared what I know to the best of my ability, mm -hmm. and without any basis, quote comment, just come and piss on the post. Mm -hmm. I'm getting better. Mm -hmm. from reaction mm -hmm. to returning it rudely mm -hmm. to then editing the comment mm -hmm. to then being kind mm -hmm. to then not bothering to respond. So, so that is the progress I am making. It does bother me. It still bothers me, especially if it is completely unnecessary in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Not relevant to the subject. Mm -hmm. No basis, mm -hmm. nothing, mm -hmm. just a piss. Is it? But that's okay because there are 98 mm -hmm. people who are appreciated. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to let these two. Mm -hmm. Miss, make me miss the 98 people who appreciate it. So that is the way I look at it. It's all right. Doesn't matter. Because if I focus on those two, mm -hmm. grave injustice to the 98 who appreciated me. Mm -hmm. So I focus on them, ignore the others. Here. How do I convey that I focusing on them? I respond to these comments. I engage with those. I don't engage. Just let it be. Let that be the LWS syndrome ended. Last word syndrome. Absolutely. It's okay. It's okay. It does not change anything. It doesn't change anything. <laughs> it does not matter. It doesn't change my post. It doesn't change my reputation. It doesn't change who I am. Just because two people pissed on the post. Mm. I'll get better. I'll continue to get better at it. And uh, I don't think there is an end to anything getting better. It's a continuous process. It is a journey. So, where right now I hope to be in this particular aspect is not even let it bother me for anything more than that time I spent reading it. Ah, next. So that is when I would say yes. That level is okay. I accept. I, I don't need to strive for anything 
greater than that. I'm still some way from there. I'll get there. I'll get there. Yeah, we have spoken about it. You know? People see the world the way they are, not the way the world is. That's what I respond to many of them. Right? That's the exact comment I put. Yeah. I said, here is a quote for you. Yeah. You do not see things the way they are. You see them the way you are. Correct. My next level is, I won't even bother to say that to them. I don't know. Because not necessary. Not necessary. You know, it, it's not a coaching class I'm running yeah. on social media behavior. Yeah. I'm not a life coach for them. I don't know who they are. No need because that takes away my attention from the 98 who wish to engage with me. Because there is loss. The days, the times I read a badly worded, foul-mouthed post, my responses to the good posts are also affected. Now, I shouldn't do that to people who appreciate and uh, respect what I do. So, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get better. I get I had two reasons for asking this question. One is obviously there are people out there who are facing uh, social media trolling. They do have people who are anon under the cloak of anonymity. They spew all kinds of nonsense. That's one reason. Second is you know I'm venturing out into this and I have stayed away from doing all of this. So the one thing that I have told myself is, and I said it in the first episode as well. If you find it great and you say something good to me, great. If you find it nonsense and you think I'm the greatest fool on the planet, great. Because you know, that's where I talked about the Buddha's process of dealing with insults. If I don't accept the gift that you give me, it's still yours. So if I don't accept the insult, if I choose not to be insulted, I can be insulted only if I believe I can be insulted. I understand because when you say that it still affects me, right? And that's absolutely authentic because my intent is to share something that is useful. If you don't find it useful, can you speak to me in a manner that's appropriate is what you're expecting? You taught me this. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything. Are there social media posts that I don't agree with? Oh, yes, definitely. Are there social media posts and comments that annoy me? Oh, yes, definitely. Do I get angry and irritated? Yes. What do I do? I don't say anything. I don't need to go and piss on a post. Not required. <laughs> I will not ruin my happiness because somebody somewhere doing God only knows what commented and calls me an idiot. I don't become an idiot just because he called me an idiot. Because if I am going to allow other people to decide who I am, I am in the wrong business. And we can't live life. Can't live life based on what other people think of us. Yes, uh, again, Kitchen Master used to say this to me. One person calls you a donkey, think nothing of it. Ten people call you a donkey, think nothing of it. If a hundred person calls you a donkey, at least turn around and see if you have a tail. <laughs> so I, I take that to my life, right? Where if one person says something about me, okay. Filed away. I will re introspect. I will reflect. But if the same message comes to me from a hundred people, then I'll turn around and see if I've got a tail, right? Maybe I've become an ass. Who knows, right? But I think that that level of which brings me to my next observation. I see you being very reflective, and I've seen you change. You know, I've changed. We've changed together and we've uh, sort of lent on one another, right? It's like those two sticks that hold each other. I don't know if you have on me. I have on you. <laughs> you see, this simple thing, like you rightly said, 
A tree gives fruit not out of the goodness of its heart. It gives fruit for a selfish reason. It wants its genes to continue. If it falls under the same tree, chances are it won't grow. So it makes it sweet. So something sweet or sour or whatever it is that is appropriate for the consumer. The consumer consumes the fruit, transports the seed elsewhere and the seed germinates and comes up. Cross pollination is the only thing that makes it all possible, right? They give. So, uh, again, in the same uh, podcast that uh, Jim Collins had with uh, Shane Parrish, I think episode number 67 of the Knowledge Pod Project uh, podcast, if I 67, two episodes. In that, apparently, uh, Jim Collins said something about. His mentor, his mentor asked him a question. Jim, in our relationship, who gets more out of it? And Jim said, of course me. And Bill said, yeah, of course me. And then he said something very interesting. When both people in the relationship believe that they are getting more out of the relationship than the other, Chances are it will be a good relationship. So, we've lent on each other, right? There is no question of either of us doing more or less than the other. And if I feel that you've done more, it's great. Keeps me honest. If you believe at the same time that I've done more, it keeps you honest. And that's also great because I think that's the recipe for a good relationship. But both of us believe that we are getting more out of the relationship. I've seen you transform. I've seen you be extremely quick to anger, like I was. And I see that you are no longer that angry person. Right? There is that anger that comes out. My question to you is on one specific thing. If you could pinpoint this one thing that made this possible for me. I know it's difficult, but if you had to, what are the tipping point? Tipping point in terms of an event or how, what? Uh, Anything that event? if you had to put your finger on something and say, this is the one simple reason why I chose to be reflective and calm, then angry and expressive. The same two events that changed my life. The health issue and the pandemic induced business uh, danger to business issue. And how I was able to work my way out of both. This is what changed my outlook and approach. Both of them taught me that the only person I have any semblance of control over is myself. Nobody else. Nobody else. I am responsible for where I am. I am responsible for who I am. I am responsible for what I do. I am responsible for how you perceive me. I am responsible for how others perceive me. That's it. There were several places where I felt let down during those times mm -hmm. because I had expectations. Mm -hmm. So I don't have expectations of anybody else. Nor do I put any great expectations on myself. Mirror. Two minutes before brushing my teeth, Look at myself and say, how was yesterday? How is today going to be? So when I realized that I am the only person who can make me happy, is when I decided to let go most of my anger, irritation and chose to be more reflective. Even the social media posts, the rude ones, 
I still go back and read them because my annoyance with that is over. I have responded; it is over. Now I go back and read to see if there is something I can do better. Oh yes. When I believed I have been very kind in responding, when I go back and read, I said, "Oh, that was sarcasm mm. in kind words." Mm. Even the simple thing of saying, "Thank you for sharing your views," mm. I know the tone which I put in there. Mm. Yeah, it looks so innocent. Mm. Somebody who has put a lot of abuse, and I say, "Thank you for sharing your views." When I go back and say, I don't need to even say that. All I need to say is, that's all. Okay. That's the emojis. That's very useful. Yeah. When I get to this, I will say I have gotten to a level where I say that's okay. I don't need to. Yes, there is room for improvement, but I haven't gotten to that yet. <laughs> I'm still at. Thank you for your view. Oh, <laughs> 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 so the change came. during the pandemic the greatest lessons in life corporate lessons bank i didn't forget or sorry i didn't forgive that corporate that brand who left me standing alone i didn't forgive the bank that held me so dear abandoned me the same bank and that corporate with some years back was ready to help and support me no i created a demand yeah. the same corporate where my enemies few weeks later i realized no they are not they are doing what they have to do they have to protect their interests their interest for the greater good if i am one of those things they have to let go so be it so when i forgive i is too big a word i i am to use say forgive forgive i mean maybe i don't know i will use it because it probably conveys the what i had in mind earlier only then i can say this i have to use that word okay forgive this brand forgive this bank it's all right peace there was peace <laughs> and guess what i have a fantastic relationship with that brand and that bank again so it was all in me yeah. it was not the brand it was not the bank yeah yeah then say more now what you were saying about 2 minutes before brushing the teeth yeah uh something that i've been following for the last now about 6 years consciously every day wake up in the morning look at myself in the mirror and smile and say i love you you're a guy the first time i said that i was like you know you phony but nowadays i'm so happy looking at myself and saying i love you because i know that you're wanting to do the best that you can that's good enough for me Then I ask myself another interesting question: Who are you going to be today? Who are you going to be today? And sometimes interesting answers come up. Hmm. Right? Even though I've said I love you and all of that, still I'm smarting from something that happened yesterday. Right? So yeah, it's here. Yes. Who I am. seeking external validation is normal it happens to me too right now the only external validations that matter to me seeking is different what matters is different to me right now what matters is my near dear family absolute that's all. my father my mother my sisters my wife my two daughters Yeah, these are the only people who matter to me. Absolutely, absolutely. If they are happy with me, my job is easy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Or maybe I should say, what I do, if my job makes them happy, then I guess job is done. We can keep talking. Yeah.
<laughs> I have one question for you, and this is I'm going to ask every guest who comes on this podcast. Shoot. Take your time. But what is one sentence that you wish or you aim will encompass your life? One statement, one sentence. If that sentence was true about your life, you'd say, Arun, done a good job. What would that one sentence be? I am putting you on the spot. I know that I didn't, you know, it is not scripted. I haven't given you advance notice of this. And I spring this on everybody. And I tell them one sentence, right? I've had occasion to ask some really well-known people. World knows them, they're achievers. So I look at them and I say, I'm curious to know what would that one sentence be that if it summarized everything about your life, you'd say I've done a good job. What is that one sentence? And you know, all of them have found it difficult to answer. So I'm putting you on the spot. One sentence, now I'll just say, it may be longer than a sentence, Doesn't I matter. can maybe two sentences, but to just encompass. If the people who matter to me, or let me say, when the people who matter to me say, he's a good son, he's a good husband, he's a good father, that's it. You're a good friend, so that that's done. You're a good brother, you're a good friend, that's done. <laughs> Okay. That's it. That's it. I won't even say when. Mm -hmm. Then. So. I won't say if and when. I will just say good son, good father, good husband. What else do I want in life? Existence fulfilled and justified. I think that is a wonderful place to to leave this. And uh, I think I'm going to have you here again for something else. Um, there is so much that we can talk about. But I don't want to test the patience of the, the viewers or the listeners too much. Right? Um, and you being the Insta king, right? You know that it's 60 seconds or 65 seconds and you you seem to have an idea of the algorithm. So let me not do that now. I'll take a rain check that I'm going to get you back here sometime in the future. Probably on one of our rides. Anytime, anywhere, any place, happy to speak with you. Happy to engage with you because there is so much I learn every time I do that. Not only about things, about myself. Whatever I spoke today, it's a revelation to myself. I said, oh, what did I just say? <laughs> I need to listen to this podcast. <laughs> I, 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 and I would like a few other people to listen to the podcast and I'd like to see their faces when they watch this. Uh, that's okay. I, I think uh, I need to listen to it first because... There might be a few... Um, there might be a few people with a few problems with their eyes. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, I think I surprised myself. Yeah, that's what we constantly do. Yeah, not bad. I can still surprise myself. Absolutely. So, you know, uh, do a good deed and tell people to like and share and forward this podcast to the world. Please like and share. Because if it can change one person's life, it's worth it. And what's your trademark? What's your trademark on, on social media? We'd like one of that, please. <laughs> that is the two. Ah. One is a hello. Yeah. I should have said that at the start. It doesn't matter. So all I do at the end is... <laughs> this is the end. <laughs> Thank you. Keep watching, keep listening, and please spread the word around. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Appreciate your patience. Thank you.